Hello, my name is Clark Musser. I am the CEO of Dauntless Software, the makers of TraceSuite. And today what we're going to show is the end-to-end -end process for using the TraceSuite application uh, for producers and processors from the moment that we put uh, the first plant into a facility, either through the 15-day or an import, all the way through uh, creating a product, manifesting it, and sending it off to a retailer or some other facility. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use all the tags that we normally use. I've already pre-set up some location tags. I've already have our, our, our logins. I have our strain set up and all these other things. On the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see that we have the uh, phone application, which I'm projecting from my phone up to the screen. On the right hand part I have the PC application. Down in the bottom right hand side here I'm going to uh, start a clock just to kind of show how long it takes. I'll, I'll be cutting in and out uh, of, of the video as we go so that keeps a clock going so you can see exactly how long it really takes if I didn't have to actually physically move anything I just was doing this all uh, through our software. Uh, in the bottom here of course you're seeing the video I'm shooting of the actual work I'm doing. I have a, uh, the mobile printer that's connected into my phone which prints uh, tags for my plants as I go and from there we're just gonna go right into this. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and uh, start our clock so we can kind of see how long this actually takes and then we're going to log into both the PC and the phone app using our um, login badge and the NFC chip that's in the back of the phone and the NFC scanner that is attached to the PC through the USB. And then once we do that what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create our first plant bringing in through the 15 day. Uh, let me do this through the phone application and the first 15 days you can also do this through a regular uh, import mechanism as well or through uh, manifest if you are not in a 15 day. We're going to go ahead and scan the location room which is our bedroom. We're going to turn our label printer on. Okay, it found it. I turn it on, hit exit. I scan my veg room. And then I'm going to, it's going to, knowing that this is a plant room, it's going to say I can only create plants here. So we're going to go ahead and create Clark's strain plants. And then I'm going to scan my first plant. This will be my mother plant. And as it's scanning this in, it automatically spits out my label. I grab that and I. Put that on here so I can keep track of it. And then I'm going to go ahead and exit because I'm just going to create the one mother plant for now, just as a, for just to show the speed through this. And but now uh, I want to create clones from that plant. So now I'm going to go into creating clones, and I'm going to scan my mother. And then that brings up the mother strain, uh, the, you know, and then allows me to make either clones or seeds or tissue from it. I'm going to go ahead and create uh, 25 clones and then I hit save, confirm add, this goes up to the state and creates the identifier for it. I hit exit there, I'm now going to, now that I have my clones sitting in a cart, I'm going to then take them over to my clone tray, which we're going to just call a clone room one, and I'm going to select my 25 clones that I just created, I'm going to scan the location tag that is attached to my clone tray saying that this is where I'm planting them, I confirm it. And the 25 clones move into that clone tray. So I'm just done communicating state there. All right, so now that's done. I'm going to go ahead and exit here. Once the clones have grown up and become plants, I then can promote them. I then now scan my clone tray because I'm looking at my clones that have now grown to the right size that they can be promoted into plants. I select my 25 group of 25 clones that's within that clone tray. If there are multiple groups of clones, it would show you a list of them. And I'm out of those, I'm going to go ahead and promote six of them to plants. I hit continue, confirm promote. And after it's done communicating state, it comes back here. You'll now see that there's 19 left to be promoted, but I'm not gonna, I'm gonna just leave them alone. I'm gonna exit that. And now, now I have my clones that have been promoted into plants. So I'm pulling them out of my trays and I'm potting them and doing all that good stuff. And once I'm done potting them, then I'm gonna tag them. So I go here to the tagging. And, and then I'm gonna you see all the different groups of clones that are ready to be tagged or plants that used to be clones. And I'm gonna select the six that I just promoted. And then I'm just gonna go through here and I'm gonna scan through my, my tags. And I'm gonna keep them in the same order that I scan them. As you can see, this is just printing out new labels as I go. All 
right, so there's my six clones or plants that used to uh, be promoted. I tear this off, I flip it over. There, that's now in the exact same order of my tags that are that are I just scanned. I slap these on here. You can always inspect this tag if you if you're worried about hitting the wrong ones. But I know that these are actually correct. is actually the longest part of the process because it's a physical piece not a electronic piece because I'm taking a physical tag and associating it to an electronic uh, identifier all right now I hit exit here since I'm done uh, or I submit the group since I'm done um, promoting and this basically has now it tells the, the, the state that I've done now I can select a location that I want to now move those plants to I can either select it here from this drop down um, or I can scan the tag where it's going to go. So I'm going to put these into the bedroom, same place where my mother is. And so I'm going to confirm that. Now that's going to put, now all seven plants are now in my bedroom. Okay, so I hit exit here. At that point in time, I'm done creating my clones. And now um, the plants grow, grow to a point where I've, I've I've gone up to where I want to flower them and I've gone through all the way flower and now they're done flowering. I may have moved them into another room when, when I'm done flowering. But what I'm going to do for this demo is I'm going to go ahead and move my seven plants from the veg room into my harvest room because I'm going to harvest the, all, all seven of them. So I'm going to go here to move all items from a location, from one location to another. I scan my original location as I grab the plants. I move them over to my new location. I scan the new location. I hit confirm and now all seven of those plants have just moved from my veg room to my harvest room. I hit exit here and now I go into uh, scheduling these for harvest because they're ready to be harvest. So if I had multiple strains here it would it would allow me to um, create multiple harvests all at once. The main thing I do is I'm going to create a, a friendly name. So this is my end, end to end to end demo. Um, harvest, so I'm going to hit start harvest. I then just scan my room that I just moved them all to or my location or whatever it is that you tagged for this. could be a tag that you have in your back pocket if, you know, if that works for you. And it shows here that there are seven plants in the one location. There's only one strain. If there are multiple strains, it would create multiple harvests for you automatically. I hit schedule harvest. I submit that to the state. That takes those seven plants and it just basically tells the state that um, they're ready to be harvested. I hit exit and at this point I can then move on to my harvesting functionality which is done on the PC. So let's go back out here to the home there and then I'm going to go over here to the PC and I'm going to flip over to harvesting and processing. I'm going to go into harvest and you'll see we have a whole bunch of harvests that are in here right now. Uh, let's go ahead and go down to this one here. This is the end demo Clark strain. That's the one. As you can see, we took that friendly name we gave it and it attached the strain and the date to the harvest so that you can always find it. It's also pending wet weight and it has uh, seven plants in it. So I hit edit here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to scan a uh, loc um, a container tag because I'm you're, I'm harvesting my plants and I'm putting the harvested material somewhere. So if you're going to hang the plants and dry them whole, we, you, you report it as flower and then you can split it up later. Uh, otherwise, you um, you split it up as you go. So in this particular case, I'm going to I'm going to split my plants up into a flower container. So I'm going to scan that container. I'm going to tell it this is flower. And we're going to do this in grams. This drop down here allows me to switch to whichever weight I like. And I'm going to say that these plants ended up with uh, 10,000 grams of flour uh, in this particular container. Then I'm going to go ahead and I filled that container and I have another container. So I scan another flour container that I want to fill with material. And this one also has 10,000. Let's make this 9,000 grams. So I have a different number. I hit add. Now I have basically two containers full of flour. But at the same time, I also have um, trim and things like that that I want to go ahead and make into oil right away. So I can go ahead and scan my uh, another container where I can put all my OPM, my other plant material. 
and this has another 20,000 grams of other plant material. My seven plants are really big. And then I have a bunch of waste that I trimmed off of this, uh, you know, stems and root balls and all that stuff. So I scan another container that I'm going to put those in. This will end up being going into my daily weight or my, my waste location. And let's say there's another um, 15,000 grams of waste. I hit add. Okay. Now this now I've completed this particular wet harvest. So I hit so I submit this. This is kind of like your your gross weight of your harvest as you go. And that's just send it off to the state. There's 54,000 total grams in this harvest. Uh, it's split amongst four containers. And now I can go in after after I dry, well, my, my OPM and my waste, I could actually go work with right away. In fact, let me go ahead and show you. I, I'll go flip quickly over here to my waste. This is, you want to schedule this for destruction. So you're gonna um, enter the weight I'm sorry, this has already got a weight in it, so you're just going to schedule this thing for destruction. You're going to go ahead and scan the tag that is, is waste, and you're going to say the reason I'm going to destroy it is this was harvest waste. I hit schedule, and now this tag stays attached to my container, and that's been scheduled for waste and it's waiting for destruction. Once it reaches 72 hours, I'd be able to go into this destroy waste button here and destroy it. Okay, so now going back to my uh, harvest, now the rest, the OPM I could also then, this is ready to be converted, so I'm just going to go ahead and put that aside. You don't have to do anything with that. Uh, it doesn't actually dry. Uh, the flower dries and then it can be split into additional waste or additional OPM. So now I'm going to go over here to my harvest after it's dried. I hit edit. You see down here, here's the waste I scheduled. And I also have the other plant material that I haven't done anything with, which is this container here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, out of these two flower containers, uh, it, when it's, it dried, uh, this 10,000 ends up, I'm going to only end up with a thousand flower. Now let's make it 4,000 flower out of that one. And, uh, and hit update. And then on the second one, uh, that's going to end up with uh, 2,000 flower. Hit update. But at the same time, I have additional trim and things like that because I didn't want to dry it and then, and then use it dry. So I take my other plant material and I put it in here and I say, and I put in how much the dry, that dried material was. And let's say that's another 5,000 grams. Okay, and then I have additional waste, and I, so I'm going to scan my waste container, and I put in my waste, and let's call that another 3,000 grams. Okay, obviously the gross dry weight can't weigh more than your, your total wet weight that's of flowers. So there's 19,000 wet weight that came in, their gross dry weight is going to have to be less than that. Alright, so I submit this to the state. And then that's all done and harvest is complete. And you can see down here that shows your dry weight of 14,000 total and it was 54,000 wet. Okay, now I hit, I can exit harvest at this point and I'm now gonna go create some material lots. So you can create both 15 pound other material and five pound flower lots from this. So first thing I'm gonna do is it's gonna show you up here the flower that's available, uh, including the, the ones that I just created and other plant material that's available. And then I'm going to create a new lot. And uh, I, I, first thing I do is I have to scan my flower container because I'm going to create a flower lot here. Or I could create, or I could scan my other plant material container if I want to do one of those. And I hit create flower lot. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a container to put the flower lot in. This is really just could be a, just a tag that you use or you know for for like a bag or a or Tupperware or whatever you're using. I'm going to go ahead and use a virtual tag because you don't actually have to use a tag for these if you don't want to. And then um, from this container I scanned, I'm going to go ahead and use um, a thousand of this flower to create my lot. Now if I wanted to, I could scan another flower container. So if I add a, added a cured container up here, I could scan another one, the other, the other one that I had. 
and hit select here and that's going to basically put it up here as another one that I can repeat in the bottom right hand side it shows you the maximum weight I could put in I put in a thousand there's 1267 left so I could put in another 1200 coming from this particular container into my to my lot down here and this is a single lot container here you can actually also create split lots down here so multiple containers for a single lot um, if you for example only had two and a half pound bags and you wanted to make a five pound lot you could fill two different bags you kind of just connect them together and then but that's kind of how you do it down here so anyway once I'm done with that I submit that to the state there you go and then my lots are now created and now I can exit here and now I'm going to go into product creation oh actually let, let's quickly before I skip past it let's go to quality assurance so I go over here to quality assurance and you'll see that um, I've got uh, various um, lots that are already pending uh, quality assurance. But I can go and hit create QA sample. And I can go in here and I can select my uh, one of my lots that I want to sample. And um, let's see this one here. And I select the lab I want to send it to and my sample amount, so like four grams. And I hit create, and then that's just going to create a sample that, that I can send, then manifest and send off for um, QA results. And manifesting QAs is very similar to, to manifesting everything else. So I'll show you the manifesting in a bit. But that's basically all you have to do. Um, as results come back, these pending results over here will change. It automatically pulls from the state. But you can, know, if you've been logged in and you, and, and you haven't uh, checked it for a while, you can always click the sync QA results from state and it will automatically pull immediately. So it's like an immediate pull button. So I hit exit here. Um, I can also create employee samples, works the same way. And then, uh, or vendor samples if you want to send them off for um, uh, you know, samples to, to get retail. Now, if, so let's go ahead and go into product creation. Um, so in product creation, uh, there, the way this works is there's the available material shows up in the upper left hand side. And you know I have a bunch of other plant lots here, flower lots, and other material lots. And then in the, on the right hand side it shows what products have already been created. In the bottom is where you're doing all your creation. We have this um, concept called recipes. So what you're going to do is you're going to create a recipe because that recipe is something that you can recreate over and over and over again for your particular um, uh, facility. And the, the, the standard recipes that the state uh, looks for are, are right here. So you can always do a standard recipe. Now the problem is that it doesn't, it, it's recreatable by the state, but there's, it's just basically the way it is. If you're creating something called you know, Clark's Special Cookies, um, I, create a, I can create a new product recipe and I can call it just that. And let's say that, uh, well, let's just, for example here, let's call this, um, let's do a marijuana mixed infusion, okay? And from marijuana mixed infusion, you can see that these are all the types of materials that can be used to bring it in. That's shows in the, in the middle. On the left-hand side is just the ingredients that you're gonna create for your recipe. In the middle is all the things that can be used that you have in stock. And then on the right-hand side is actually what's in stock currently that applies to your recipe. So I'm going to create a marijuana mixed infused. Let's call this um, Clark's mixed infused. Okay, so that you know, it's, it's it shows I have it. I can also change the restrictions here. So for example, let's say I don't want to use uh, mixed marijuana in it. I can remove that or keef, and then this won't actually allow me to pull those in in the future. Um, I hit my save. Oh, the other thing I can do over here, I can also change my strain restrictions. So I can restrict this to a specific strain, or I can add or subtract source materials. And then I can also add other materials. So for example, my mixed infusion has a, um, uh, it uses some container, some, some packaging material. So uh, infused packaging. And so then I can put in here that I have a thousand of units of these the packages. I can put in a description. I can even create a uh, inventory tag for it so I can actually manage it. I hit save, and then that basically saves it as an inventory item. And then if I go down here and I select this infused packaging, I add it to my recipe. Now that's actually 
part of my recipe now so that I can also, you, it'll also show me that in my um, creation. I also can select which label I want to use when I'm um, printing. So for example, the standard 3x4 uh, label. Um, and I can edit the specifics that show up in this label by putting in some special text and that will all show up in my um, in the manifesting I'll show you in a bit. So I, I save my recipe and this saves it so that I can come back and use it over and over again and then I'm going to go ahead and create my product and as I was saying up here in the uh, so now in the creating product again it shows you the summary of available materials that were that are in our system um, or in your facility. Over here is the, avail the exact available ingredients with our same quantities in the upper right hand side. And then the bottom is again where you're going to be creating your product. Um, on the left hand side is where you're going to be pulling the stuff down from the right, upper right, and then on the right hand side is actually all the fun features that you're, the, the data you're going to put in for your product. Um, so uh, for this particular one we're going to use our infused packaging and we're going to go ahead and pull from uh, this this one right here this lot okay so this is my Clark's new strain actually that's not the one we wanted to use uh, we want to use Clark's strain which is this guy okay so we're gonna add this over here and then we're gonna go ahead and use a uh, hundred of our packaging material and we're gonna use uh, 1200 of our um, of our lot, and over here you'll see that the marijuana weight is the 1200. Uh, we don't have any other weight, but if you did want, you could add other things in here, like um, uh, you know whatever might be you might be adding to this thing. Let's, so for some reason, if there's another thousand grams of other weight, you put that in, it's going to change your marijuana percentages and things like that. Your end product weight. So my end product weight is going to be 2000. Um, my um, I, I'm not gonna. I, I didn't have any waste, and if I didn't have, if I had unused uh, material, it would then split it into a separate um, uh, group that that is still in progress. Because this is an in progress product, um, it's not submitted to the state until you're done with it. So if you end up with some some of your stuff that's still in progress, while well, you want to finish others, you can fin you can put in your finished, and then use the place the unused into a in progress, so that you can finish it later. Um, things like you know, create some cookie dough and you only use half of it to make some cookies and you're going to use the other half you know, later on today or something. Um, so out of this I'm going to produce uh, 100 units and then that makes sure that our net weight is below where it has to be for this to submit to the state. Uh, I can tell it whether I need a QA or not uh, and, and so I'm going to say no just for, just for now and I hit the submit to state. If I want to, I can now scan a tag, so I can actually track this through my through the system with tags again. I'm going to go ahead and just leave this virtual, and I'll hit submit. And that is now created my product, and that's now you'll see right here. I have a hundred um, quantity of that product. So I've left my products, and now at this point in time, I have everything I need to actually go ship it off and and make some money. So I go over here to shipping and receiving. I go to my shipping button. I create a new manifest. And I get to select whichever, whoever I'm going to send it to. So I'm going to send this off to, um, let's just say I'm sending it off to uh, Big Trophy Enterprises. And I give it a, a, a sample name. Uh, you give it a friendly name just so that you can find it later. So this is Clark's Manifest uh, Demo. And then I just, what's my delivery me method? I'm going to deliver, I'm going to use my car, and I'm going to be the driver. I create my manifest, and at this point I'm going to add inventory. So I hit the add inventory button, and this is only going to allow me to um, send stuff that the state allows you to send to whichever vendor you chose. So it's only going to show me that material that is allowed to be sent. So here's my marijuana mixed infused. I'm gonna search for that. And here you go, you can see my Clark's mixed infused right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and send him 20 of this, uh, of, of my 100. And for a total of, I'm gonna, we're gonna charge him 200 bucks. I'm gonna hit add. And then I'm gonna hit done. 
and you're going to see that that's been added to my manifest. At this point in time, um, now that I know where it's all going, I could hit my print label, and this would then pull in all of your um, all of your lab results, which of course I don't have any because I didn't s submit it and finish it through the lab. But um, it, it, it has all the information that this particular label um, is set up to, to do. And I can actually go in here and edit these things uh, directly if I have something special that's different. Like, for example, it's a sample, not for a resale or whatever, um, that you can put in here. You can also put in a, um, a, a website that will be attached to a QR code if you're going to be printing a QR code for it. And then um, you hit generate the label. And what this is going to actually do is it's going to pull up for the label, it's going to pull up a PDF, which went over to my other screen. So let me pull this over here. And this is, you know, just a a demo label, so it's not necessarily the the, the prettiest. But this is the the label that would be coming out. Um, this this is this that comes right off of that label generation. This QR code would go to whatever website you have. It has the UBI. It even has the barcode for for reading. The 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 QR code is good for um, your end customers, so that they can actually see go to your website or whatever uh, that you want to market. Um, I would just be able to print as many of those as I want. I exit that, and then I would be able to print my manifest by hitting this. It does the same thing. This pulls up my manifest. Obviously, it would have all the IDs and everything like that once it is um, uh, it's been gone through. Uh, this is just a sample data, so it just kind of pops in here. Um, and then uh, I hit my submit manifest I, by telling it what date I'm going. So I'm just I'm just going to leave right now and arrive right now, just because. Oh, it doesn't. It won't allow you to do that. Right, anyway, I submit that into the manifest, and then once it's submitted, it's got it goes off to the state, and we're all done. So. Um, that is pretty much end to end. Uh, once oh, once it goes in, once the manifest has been shipped, it goes into quarantine here. When you're done, when it's sat through the 24 hours, the this button over here that's called ship will will turn on, and then you can go over here and you can actually ship it. So once you um, hit the ship button, that actually releases it, and uh, at that point in time, the your retailer or other or processor or whoever is receiving your data will be available to get it. Um, and 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 that's a, that's it. That's end to end how our entire application works. And it was about twenty six minutes. Have a good day.